All right, describe this movie in three words. Flowers, psychedelics, pubic hair. So Midsummer tells the story of a group of college friends who go off to a Swedish village in the middle of nowhere for a once in every 90 years summer festival. And then little do they know that these uh, Swedish people got a couple of plans of their own. Well, it's here, guys, the sophomore effort by Ari Aster, the guy that made a huge splash last year with Hereditary, a movie that a lot of people would call the best horror film of 2018. A lot of people would call the best film of 2018. I enjoyed Hereditary, definitely appreciated the filmmaking by Ari Aster, and he's a guy that I will keep my eye on, but uh, I just wasn't quite in the best of 2019 camp with it, so for a little pretext. I really liked it, didn't love it. Now you get to Midsummer. And Midsummer had a lot of similar hype and praise coming out of, I believe it premiered at a film festival or they at least screened it very early. So it's been weeks of people losing their ever loving mind all over Twitter. Midsummer just blows my mind and it's the best film of 2019. This is the horror film to beat. This is Ari Aster, one two punch from Hereditary. And I don't agree yet again. Now let me get this out of the way, even though I know saying it's not gonna change anything, but I'm gonna say it anyway. If you are the type of person that this film is geared towards, you like really stylistic, art house, meticulous style horror films, which this film's not even, it's maybe 15% horror, it's more of like a drama, but anyway. Films like that, then this is going to be for you. And by no means am I saying that you are wrong for liking this movie. By no means am I saying that my opinion is more correct than yours because I don't love it on the level that you do. This movie just does not fit my tastes, it does not, provide what I go to the movies for. Can I appreciate it? Sure, and I'll get into reasons why. Did I enjoy it? Not so much. So save all the insults and all the ridiculous bullshit you're gonna post down below for somebody else because it's not gonna have any effect on me. Moving on. So starting off with the positives for Midsummer. Once again, just the filmmaking, the artistry of Ari Aster. It is just full blown on display like it was with Hereditary. The guy moves the camera in a very specific way and does some very interesting style shots and editing transitions and stuff. It is very interesting and enjoyable to see what this guy can do with his style of filmmaking. And he is one of those filmmakers that I think the more that he does, he will have certain calling cards where you'll be able to put on five minutes or so and you'll be able to go, oh, this is an Ari Aster film. He's just one of those type of filmmakers. And those are great things to have in movies. Filmmakers like that with such a distinct style and a distinct voice where you can pick them out of a hat and immediately tell who is making the film. That is talent. By no means am I denying that. No matter, how mu no matter how much I like this, or don't like this, or like Hereditary, or don't like Hereditary, the dude is a masterful filmmaker, not taking that away from him whatsoever. Going along with that, the cinematography, the color choices, uh, it's a very bright film. It pretty much takes place, I'd say 90% of it in the daytime, and they utilize the shots and everything very well. It's a very nice movie to look at. This little village is very bright and open and kind of beautiful in its own way. There's a lot of different shots with many multicolored flowers. There's even like a whole flower dress at one point that's kind of very wild to look at. You're kind of mesmerized by it. It's like a kaleidoscope. You're like, ah. A positive that's kind of exclusive for me. I don't know how common this is. Now, not to say that this is like a full-blown phobia or anything, because it's not, but I do have a small amount of a fear of being in the, like a foreign environment, like going to a country far away from where your comfort zone is with completely different customs, not knowing where to go if something goes wrong, not knowing you know, who to trust, you're just totally fish out of water. There's elements of that situation that has always kind of unnerved me. Like even where like someone's like, hey, you wanna go do a backpacking trip through you know, the Netherlands? And I'd be like, uh, I, maybe. So the fact that this movie kind of plays on that and kind of you know, takes that concept and explores it a bit, much like, to a much more extreme degree, much like Hostel did, movies of that nature where you get Americans and put them into some fish out of water scenario where the cultures and the customs are just so wildly different from what we know that it just makes you uncomfortable just experiencing it. That is something that does unnerve me and it does kind of make the hairs in the back of my neck stand up here and there when they start to explore certain aspects of that scenario. Unbelievable. Welcome and happy midsummer. Skull! 
Now I will tell you up front, there is not a lot of it in this movie, so do not walk in expecting that. I don't know why you would, because the trailer certainly doesn't put it forefront, but the little bit of carnage candy that we get in this movie, the little bit of gore and disturbing images and, you know, the, the, the nasty parts of the horror film that this is trying to be, definitely delivers. It's definitely very good effects. It definitely, you look at it and you're like, oh God, that's, that's an image that I'm gonna be sticking with for a little while. They go for it with a couple of these shots, much like how in Hereditary, the shot involving the um, telephone pole, uh, you have a couple of those shots in this film that will stick with you a bit. And my last positive is praising the performance of our lead actress Florence Pugh, I believe her name is. I've never seen this girl before, so if I mispronounce her name, I'm sorry. But this is my preview for what she can do. And it's a pretty damn good preview because a lot of the emotions and a lot of kind of the, the weight of the themes of this film, like uh, grief and the health of a relationship, it really kind of falls on her shoulders and she does really well with it. There's quite a few times where she has to emote and while I do think the film pushes it a bit too far with how many times they make her emote and one scene in particular, the length of time they make her emote, I do think that for her acting ability, she does damn good. So, I mean, yeah. I was so very sorry to hear about what happened. I'm sorry. Now moving on to the bad. Holy fuck, this movie is drawn out, self-indulgent of Ari Aster, and pretentious as hell. If that offends you because you like this film, I'm sorry, that's just what I see. This is a film that says, look how great of a filmmaker I am. Look at all these crazy wild decisions that I do that totally goes against the grain of what most people expect from movies, which is why some people really love it, and a lot of people, I think, will really not like it. And as far as the pretentious side, I mean, this just, from beginning to end, this movie just makes it feel like it's so much more important and so much more masterful and so much more genius than it actually ends up being. So to dive into a little bit of all of that, this is a very simple story. This is not something like Hereditary where I will full on say, even though it tackles some themes and some aspects of different movies that we've seen before, it did it in a very unique way and it went in a lot of different directions that I did not personally see coming. Not the case with Midsummer. Midsummer takes a story that we have seen quite a few times, fish out of water, person goes to this weird foreign cult and crazy things start to happen and it doesn't really do anything outside of that. It doesn't really go in any directions that we haven't seen before. It doesn't even go in any directions that you can't see coming while the film is playing. There's even like this little stylistic element which I do like on its surface where there's like different drawings and different um, visual aids that you can see in the background like paintings or stories or whatever that people have put around this little village that kind of illustrate things that are going to happen later on in the film and it happens two or three times where it's you know either pans across a bunch of pictures or it actually stays on and does like a slow zoom because it wants you to see it and it wants you to pay attention to the visual images you're seeing and put together the story in your head. Well, when you do that, the thing that happens 20 minutes later, five minutes later, an hour later, doesn't surprise you because you already saw it. It already told you it was gonna happen. So the whole time you're in this movie, two hours and 20 minutes long that could have easily, easily been an hour and 15, uh, hour and 50 minutes. The whole time I'm just sitting there, I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, can we get to the point a little faster? Like, I see where you're going with this. I've seen movies go this direction before. I see all the writing on the wall with where this obnoxious, stereotypical, stupid American character is gonna be in the storyline later on. I see where this relationship is gonna be going. I see where this strained friendship is gonna be going. Like, I don't know if it's just me, maybe everybody else was surprised by it, but I just saw caricatures and I saw cliches that were just filmed a lot more stylistically than we've seen before, but weren't utilized any differently than we've seen before. So I just saw the whole story from the first 45 minutes of the film and I just kept hanging on and hanging on and hanging on, waiting for it to shock me or surprise me or throw me for a loop at some point. And it never did. And this movie really will test your patience. Like it's a very, very long taxing experience. There are so many shots that Ari Aster chooses to stay on and just linger the camera or even slow zoom on something that goes on for like seven to 10 seconds longer than it should. Not to say like that the movie just needs to hurry up and go, like just cut it down, cut it down everywhere, but there's so many shots where you're like, by six seconds, you're, I, I get it, I get what we're seeing. 
nothing's changing. I still, I, I see where this is going. Fucking hell. And we're still zooming. Like, I'm not the type of person to pull my phone out in a theater, but I'm quite sure if I was that kind of asshole person to pull my phone out, I probably would have killed my battery looking at the time because there's, God, this movie's long. Now, moving on from just that, the, the director's choices. The characters in this film don't help the case because honestly, outside of most of what our main actress gives, there's not a single other likable or interesting character in this film. Like I said, they're kind of caricatures and cliches that we have seen before. You get what I will call the love child of Chris Pratt and Seth Rogen. Like, what is this dude's name? Hang on, okay, Jack Rayner. I'm sorry, this is proof that in some alternate universe somewhere that Chris Pratt and Seth Rogen has been fucking because tell me he does not look like both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Tangent over. Anyway, this guy plays the boyfriend of our main actress who both of them, in their, for their own reasons, don't really want to be in the relationship anymore. You've been wanting out of this stupid relationship for like a year now. But they both kind of stick with each other, I guess, because that's just what they're used to, which is an interesting exploration of that relationship because it's not like the overblown Hollywood version of one of them's cheating or one of them doesn't know something about the other or one of them's clearly the antagonist. No, they're both perfectly fine people for the most part of the movie. They both have their reasons why the relationship is not healthy for them. They both have their reasons why they kind of need or depend on the other person. So it's a it's an interesting way that they explore that. But the problem is, is very quickly in the film, they stop exploring that with our lead actress and they start exploring it more in a negative way with Jack Rayner's character. <laughs> How long have you two been together? Just over three and a half years. Four years. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and he becomes very unlikable. And to me, about halfway through the film, all the way through the end, he doesn't even become believable anymore. Like, it's, I don't know if it's his performance. I don't know if the way that he was told to do it, but just the lines that come out of his mouth, they just don't feel natural. They don't feel real within the moment. They don't feel like that's something that this character would say. I, I can't quite put my finger on it without having clips to show you, but there was so many times where I'm like, this dude just feels like he's acting. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel real. And then the other characters, you get Will Poulter, who is the stereotypical stupid American that does everything wrong in a foreign setting and you're just waiting for him to get taken out. And the other guy who is so fixated on the culture that you know he's gonna go too far at some point. And you just see the writing on the wall within the first 10 minutes of seeing these characters' interactions once they get to this little Swedish village. So just, there was nobody for me to kind of latch onto and really enjoy and hang on with, except for parts of the lead actress when she wasn't forced to really overact her emotions. There's like five scenes in this movie where they make this girl run off by herself and dry heave and cry by herself for a good 15 seconds. And I'm like, fuck, grief, I get it. Aside from that, it comes a point in the story where I do not buy at all that Anybody that is not a part of this Swedish village would stick around. Like something really grisly happens like an hour in that sets everybody off and like, what the hell did we just walk into? Two, three minutes later, everybody's cool. Nobody acts like anything weird happened. And the more weird shit that happens, the more like content they seem to be staying there. There is huge things that happen that anybody that has ever seen any horror film ever would look at and go, fuck this, I am out of here. And they don't, they're just like, when's dinner? And that, that really stretched the plausibility of this for me. Like Hereditary was brilliant at being so grounded while having some of these supernatural elements. Everything character wise in that film felt so natural and felt so real with how these characters interact with each other and respond to grief and respond to the crazy shit happening around them. Midsummer that expires by like an hour in and you're just like, okay, this feels like a movie. This feels like they need these characters to stick around. So we're just not going to pretend that it's ridiculous that they're sticking around. And my last negative, which is something that might just be something that annoyed me. Ari Aster has kind of, I guess he's choosing one of his little calling cards or stylistic tips where he has like a specific sound that he creates in a film. And he wants that to be like the signature sound that sets off a bit of uncomfortableness in the uh, the audience and hereditary it was it was the little girl making that sound or like you know you'd be in a dark room and you'd hear and you're like Ooh, where's that bitch at this movie it's a breath they go like oh. what is it it has special properties and people in the village will do it they're getting ready to say something they go oh. and the movie does it 
over and over and I'm like, that's not disturbing, that's just kind of weird. And going aside from that, there is times in this movie that this will definitely not be something you're gonna hear very many people say, but it was something that happened for me for whatever reason. There's camera movements as well as long extended sequences of moans and groans and whines and cries that this film utilizes multiple times that actually started to make me feel a little nauseous and give me a bit of a headache. I don't know why, there's just times where people are trying to emote like the feelings that they are all having as like some kind of a hive mind group in this cult and they're like, ah, they're making all these noises and it just goes on for an uncomfortable length, not enough to disturb me, but just enough to like just start to affect my health a bit. I was just like, oh, please stop. In the end, guys, this will probably be the most divisive horror film this year. You're gonna have people that are praising it and probably people already praising it as the best film of 2019, a one-two punch for Ari Aster, a horror film that will be celebrated for decades to come. And by no means am I saying those people are wrong. It's just a matter of taste. This movie is like, for a food analogy, it's like one of those delicacy meals. It looks beautiful, you appreciate the artistry that went into it, but everybody that bites down on it's gonna have one of two reactions. You're either going to savor it, or you're gonna spit it the fuck out. And I'm just one of those people that this is just not for me. This is not a movie for me. This does not play into the reasons why I go to the movies. I did not enjoy myself through at least two thirds of the runtime, and it just, by the end, there was nothing about this movie that stuck with me and made me linger and made me want to like explore it and talk about it and discuss it. I had all of those with Hereditary, despite not being quite on the love that a lot of people had for it. This movie, that movie stuck with me. I wanted to discuss it. I wanted to debate it. I wanted to look into things. I wanted to find explanations for things. Midsummer, I'm like, mm, I get it. I don't need to watch it again. We only do this every 90 years. So if this is the type of movie for you, by all means, rush out, check it out, and give me your reasons why you love it so much. But if your tastes tend to align with mine, if you had the same feelings with Hereditary, or if all the things that I've described with this film just don't seem to appeal for you, then this is not going to be the film for you. It's quite cut and dry. So for me, unfortunately, gonna have to recommend that you skip it. So what did you guys think about Hereditary? Stop yelling at me. I already hear it in the comments section. Like I said, if you love this, please tell me reasons why down below. Like give me explanations for things that disturbed you or stuck with you or surprised you. I want to know the different experience that people have with this film because I was quite disappointed myself and I wish I would have had that other experience. I really do. So let me know down below. Or if you didn't like it, if there's reasons I didn't go into, tell me why you didn't like the film down below. And let's discuss Midsummer. And are you looking forward to Ari Aster's third film or is this something where he just doesn't feel like the type of filmmaker for you? Or is he your new favorite director? Talk about Ari Aster down in the comment section below. Thank you guys. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Please check the video description below for social media links like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Also have my Teespring store. If you just scroll down, you'll see all of my merchandise. I got a couple of Chucky designs, one brand new one for the release of the Chucky 2019 movie. Check all that out down below, guys. Please let me know if Teespring works for you or if you preferred Spreadshirt. I still have that active as well. And also my Patreon page is down in the video description, which is a great way to give back to this channel, help this channel grow, and get cool exclusive content for your eyes only if you decide to become a patron. So check all that out, guys. And if you want to check out some more of my reviews, including my review last year of Hereditary, you can check that out by clicking right over here.